it is time to get festive. Step one, we've got to find the Christmas tree and the decorations, and they're up here. Well, we were thinking about getting like a real tree this year, like an actual real tree, but I think we're going to hold off and use this plastic one. This will be the last time. This isn't the tree, this is just a... How can I help? Hold it, you okay. got it? Yeah. Let's reverse you... a little bit. Wait, how do you want to do this? Reverse a tiny bit. What do you mean reverse? Go backwards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of forward. <laughs> you just sound fancy. <laughs> All right, good job, babe. I'm doing one step at a time. Yeah, I know. Feels <laughs> like it. Pivot. Pivot. Pivot! Pivot! Lovely. So this tree needs to... Be demoted. Mm -hmm. Did you guys always put a Christmas tree up at Christmas? No. We started incorporating a Christmas tree, I think when I was like in high school, but I've never had like a real Christmas tree. What about mm. yourself? We have the same Christmas tree forever, I think. I don't think we ever changed it. So it probably lasted about 40 years. Oh my God. So when should we tell Lennon about Santa Claus? Or are we going to oh, no. tell him about Santa Claus? Well, we, we have to go along with it, right? For a while, to some degree, because otherwise he's gonna tell all his friends at school that my mummy and daddy said Santa's not real, then their parents are gonna be annoyed at us. Like this is probably one of the first universal lies we tell our children. Yeah. Or is it a lie or is it a story? Or a story can be this a, lie. a lie. This story is a lie. Yeah, maybe we'll just say uh, we, d we haven't seen him. The notion of Santa exists, but we have never actually physically seen Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So it's up to him to make his own decision on whether he believes that he's real or not. Yeah. Like who knows if he's real or not, but we're still shooting our shot. I love how just the ornaments are already attached. Yeah, it brings back memories of last Christmas. Yeah. Look at this one, guys. This is uh, an ornament that Stephanie got us. This is our first pandemic Christmas. Wait, so when did you find out that Santa Claus wasn't real? It was Christmas day and I just couldn't find dad for ages. And then the next minute I walk into the lounge and there's a man dressed in Santa with the same hair as my dad. I don't think he even wore a wig because his hair is <laughs> kind of long and similar. It is very Santa Claus like, yeah. Uh, I kind of put two and two together that he disappeared for a while and mm. then there was this really chilled Santa that looked and sounded exactly like my dad. <laughs> I found out kind of slowly. It was like a slow process. I think I was maybe in like first or second grade too. So mm. I must have been like six or seven. But there were rumors going around at school saying like <laughs> Santa isn't real. I knew for sure that he wasn't real when me and my brother were playing video games in my parents' room. I was like kind of playing around in the closet. And in the closet, we had found all these gifts and we're like, what? Like this is crazy. What do you most look forward to for Christmas? I think the food. Yeah, the me food, too. Yeah. Yeah, me the too. Food. I think it's just any excuse to just like eat in excessive amounts is just. Mm -hmm. And this is the ultimate excuse because everyone else is doing it exactly. as well. Exactly. Christmas dinner is my like last meal on earth, death mm. row meal. I really? Think. Yeah, with all the trimmings. What, what are your thoughts and feelings about gifting? Do um, you find it therapeutic? Do you find it um, a fun chance to express your love for someone? My love language, I think gifts is probably one of the lowest. Yeah, me too. I think, uh, stuff isn't as valuable as kind of the connection of Christmas mm. and the family and coming together and like... Gifts are still, I guess, part of mm. the love languages mm -hmm. for a reason. So what is one of your favorite gifts to receive? My favorite gifts are experiences, mm. like gifts that don't take up physical space, mm. like, like a dinner or um, a trip yeah. or ice skating, you mm -hmm. know, something. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of fuses in quality time as well. I like the fact that the experience is what you look back and remember, don't yeah. you? You don't remember the, th the things. If you give me a gift that I use every single day, like my water bottle, I do think of you when I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. These are, this is the water bottle that Ben got me. Even a good book, I think, because <gasps> Ooh, the good thing about a good yeah. book is uh, you're not getting a book for Christmas, you're getting all the knowledge that comes with it. Yeah. So if that book was enlightening to you, then that mm. friend gave you access to information that could change your life. That would be a good gift idea. Just like getting your friends books that you think that they yeah. might like. Oh, remember we put, oh, there's one of the tinsel things at the bottom here. Oh, we, maybe uh, we should buy a skirt, a, a like skirt. a skirt for the tree. Does this look better though? What, this skirt thing? Yeah. I don't know, does it look worse? I think you should just continue. We'll, we'll evaluate once it's done. Actually, it's kind of cute. Oh, this looks really nice. Wow. Honestly, do we even get a real tree next year? This is so solid. It's fantastic. It's freaking fantastic. Good job, babe.
Cheers, babe. Merry Cheers. Christmas, my love. Merry Christmas. What are we making tonight? We are going to be making a chickpea and cauliflower curry. It's pretty good last time we made it, wasn't it? So adding it cauliflower delicious. to this one. Yeah, and Lennon's helping. Lennon! Yeah, buddy, that's Lennon. perfect. Thank you, mate. Great, if you can just bang that into the door a little bit and then go into that closet, great. Let's just do about half an onion, I'd say. It's a delicious meal. You can use it as leftovers, a chickpea, give it a nice bit of protein. Do you think cauliflower is related to broccoli? I feel like it. They look like it. Yeah, it looks like an albino broccoli. <laughs> is broccoli and cauliflower related? The same what? species. I shooketh. am shooketh. Shooketh. Oh my god, we're all, that's so crazy. We're, we're just the buying family. the same thing. Fry this till it gets nice and soft. Four or five cloves of garlic. I'm going to add the cauliflower in. I'm going to add in our garlic. Then we're going to throw in our lovely chickpeas. Garam masala is a great one for the curries. Mm. We need about a tablespoon and a half. Don't be shy on this. Start really smelling those floral notes now. And then we're gonna add a touch of curry powder for obvious reasons, because this is a curry. A touch of cumin. Yeah, I'm lovely. a changed woman. I used to not like cumin. And then we are gonna add our fire roasted diced tomatoes. Whoa. We're gonna add our lovely coconut milk. This just gets it creamy, nice and delicious, whilst yet still nutritious. But then we'll just let this cook, let the flavors really get to know each other. We're going to use a little bit of almond flour just to thicken up slightly. Mm. I'm going to have a little one-on-one -on -one with the ladies here while Ben is away back there. <laughs> and completely listening in. A little hot tip for ladies who are not married yet and are looking for a life partner, get a man who knows how to cook. It is such an important life skill, especially when you have children, because that's like a big chore. Because, you know, you gotta freaking eat every day. You want them to eat healthy, you know, and if you at least know a few recipes or yeah. have some idea of nutrition. We went through a stage of it once a week. We try to keep it like to a Sunday where we made a new recipe. Yeah. We learned a new one. Uh -huh. And most recipes are actually quite easy. You just gotta look it up, get the ingredients, and just actually read it and, um, and do it. Cooking is just a habit. And I think mindset is really important. I think if you dread cooking, you're never gonna like it. But mm -hmm. I think cooking is really exciting because it's almost like, a, like an engineering aspect, like cooking something from the beginning, following a set of instructions, and then you get to enjoy and the people around you get to enjoy the end product. I agree, put some nice music on, put mm -hmm. some nice smells, candles right. on, whatever, make it. Make it a fun experience. Ooh, wow, that, the flowers thickened it up. Gotta test it, you know. Well. Mm, it's good. Oh, cilantro smells so good. Do you love cilantro? I do love cilantro. Me too. Coriander, as we like to call it. Bit of mint there. A little bit of mint. We're gonna make a nice little cool yogurt to go with it. We've got some Greek yogurt here. I'm gonna add some water, just so it's a little more runny. A bit of mint and cilantro. A lot of cilantro. A lot of cilantro, very little mint. <laughs> bit of salt. Just nice small little bits of cucumber to go in there. What was your first recipe that you felt comfortable making? Uh, spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> That's and so I fancy. It, it's, it's, like, I think it actually started when I was like playing in bands when I was young, because I'd be the only one that could cook, so I'd make the food. Feed the band. Feed the band. <laughs> were, were you the friend that cooked? One of them. One of them? One Who of them. Who was the other chef in there? Simon. Oh, yeah. yeah, Simon's a great cook. Yeah. yeah, he's a very good cook. Okay, let me do a little taste test of the curry. Wow. It's the batter. so good. This is a lot of rice for a baby. <coughs> well, baby. Not for Lennon, but he loves I rice. I know, he loves rice. There we go, Lennon. Wow, buddy. There we go. Does he want a little yogurt drizzle? <gasps> oh, yeah. Yeah. A bit of cilantro for buddy. Yeah. Not too much. He gets very freaked out yeah, by he green. Yeah, doesn't like too much green. For papa. Papa. Nice big serving, please. Yes, I got you. You know, a bit of cilantro. Wow, that's good. Beautiful. That looks freaking amazing. Mama's serving. Okay, how much would you pay for this at a restaurant, <clears throat> this dish? $20. Papa's, mama's, spare yogurt, a couple of forks, and we can't forget the one and only Man of the moment. Lennon. Our little buddy. Wow, Lennon. Oh, let me put on his bib. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. You ready, buddy? Bye. Bye. Thank you. Come here. Give me a cuddle. You got it. I know. I need a hug too. Thank you. Thank you. Can you blow a kiss? Very good. Very good. Oh, you want your food, huh? You want your food. All right, buddy. Let us know what you think. It's like what we had the other day, a nice chickpea curry. You've also got cauliflower straight to the rice. Straight to straight the, to the rice. plain rice. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, buddy. Merry Christmas, buddy. Mm. Feels like Christmas now. It we really it, does. Man. Wow. Just... We did a lot. We set up all the Christmas decorations. Yeah. Made a lovely meal for Buddy. Mm-hmm. And for us. And for us. I actually like the simplicity of our decorations. Uh, you don't like it? Uh, actually... This is go. unreal. Nothing to do with Google or me. The ingredients, the love. That's it, you've got, you got to put love into cooking. Mm -hmm. if, you, if it's a chore and you have to cook, it's like anything. If you go into anything that you have to do and you don't want to do it, mm. you're never going to do it as well. Mm -hmm. You can tell when someone enjoys what they do. Mm. Mm. What do you think? It's good, huh? So London is 15 months now. Mm. This is such an exciting age. I was gone for nearly two weeks, and that's mm -hmm. a long time when you have, you know, a 15-month-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. He changed so much, but by the time I came back, like, he points at everything he wants now. Now, like, my biggest lesson as a parent is letting him be upset yeah. and not immediately rushing to his assistance. Yeah. Sometimes when he falls, like, I need him to figure up figure out mm. how to get up on his own. They're in that stage where they almost have to make the mistakes for themselves so they can learn, like putting his hand, you know, he's stretched his hand in the door. Yeah. And it's, um, but then, you know, the first seven years of a baby's life, they're in that theta brainwave. They're just absorbing everything for better mm. or worse. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we understand some of that stuff has made us more conscious to be our best selves around him, try right. and program him with like, mm -hmm. you know, love and support. And you know, those little things, yeah, if he falls over and we freak out, he's going to associate something like that to a negative mm -hmm. trigger. So uh, right. even when he falls over, we're like, oh, it's okay, you know? Yeah. So I think like ultimately, like we, we're kind of um, like the ultimate influencer for him. When you become a parent, you are a role model. Yeah, and the role babe, model. You're the role it's model not a teacher for your problem. parents. Yeah. I don't know, it just like inspires me to be the best version of myself. Yeah. And I just feel so grateful that you're in the same, like you feel the same way. Yeah. All right, so it's 7.45 p.m., baby's asleep, so I am about to tackle a task that I've been putting off for several, several months. In this basket, we have all of Lennon's clothing and accessories that he has grown out of. This makes me feel some type of way because it's just like a physical reminder that time is progressing and my son is growing up before our eyes. Right now we're gonna sort through it and I'm going to create a nice little gift bag for one of my friends who had a daughter. Um, she is, I think she's gonna be like three months. So she's looking for some gently used hand-me-downs. I love this cycle. I think if I ever have a second baby, I'm gonna go the hand-me-down route. I'm just gonna, now, now I know exactly what I need. I think I'm gonna do like a renewed baby essentials because now I know things that I only know because of hindsight. Now that we are 15 months deep, I feel like I've just really relaxed into motherhood. I'm not like frantically searching about every little thing on Reddit or any forums or any apps. Like I'm just taking things as they come. And I think that is literally what parenting is. There is no instruction manual for parenthood because every child is extremely different. And I think the biggest lesson for me was that you can't study your way into succeeding into parenthood. You just have to feel it out. Just like there's no instruction manual on how to be a perfect wife or a perfect daughter. Like you just, every relationship is just different. And so you just have to be able to read the situation, read the room and, and readjust. All right guys, this is the end of this vlog. And I wanna thank you for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.